Hey, what's up guys? Collector John here. Uh, it's a good day because we are going to a video game store that I've never been to before. Uh, it's called Respawn Games, so we're driving all the way from, uh, uh oh. Oh no! Help! Uh, yeah, we're driving up from Milwaukee to West Bend, Wisconsin to check out this video game store, so it should be pretty fun. Uh, hopefully it doesn't suck. It seems like it might be a little small, but uh, oh god. Oh my god. It's too loud. I can't do the intro. It's too loud in the car wash. Hopefully this game store has some good stuff. We'll see you there. West Bend is definitely a smaller town. I think the population is like 30,000. I might be wrong about that. But to me, it would definitely qualify as a small town, like less than 50,000 people. And I like going to video game stores in small towns. I think uh, there's there's some cool like hidden gems. They might have less inventory, but there's also less people going through and buying everything. So yeah, I think it's fun. I like, I like the uh, smaller video game stores. We're getting pretty close to West Bend now. I got off the main highway and I'm taking a county highway now instead. Because I thought it'd be prettier than the highway, but uh, it's not. It's just, uh, you know, it looks like this. Oh yeah, now we're in West Bend. We got the Menards and the Hobby Lobby. That's a surefire sign that you're in West Bend, Wisconsin. This is a cute little downtown. Uh, I'm just gonna park right here. And while I'm walking up to Respawn Games, I'm just reminded of one of the things that I really like about video game hunting. And that's just visiting like these small, cute little towns that I've never been to before. It's, it's a lot of fun. And it gives me an excuse to get out of Milwaukee and just visit some places that I might not otherwise go to. And it looks like we've arrived at Respawn Games. So let's get inside and see what they have. I'm super excited to check it out. And you already know what it is, folks. We're gonna start off strong here in the original Xbox section my favorite console. See if we got anything good today. I, I immediately spotted this copy of Mad Dash. Uh, this is a game I've been wanting to check out for a while. I remember seeing ads for this in the official Xbox magazine uh, when I was like eight or nine years old. And I've just always been intrigued by it. I think the characters look super cute. And I also know that it's made by Crystal Dynamics who've made some really awesome games over the years. Uh, yeah, but this is just kind of a fun looking character racing game. It was $12 complete in a box, which was pretty decent price. So I ended up picking that one up. Uh, and then Mist 3 Exile caught my eye. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the Mist series, but I remember playing this one on PC with my brother when we were kids. And uh, I just always thought it looked so cool. And I think it'd be cool to own this Xbox version someday. Uh, so we're gonna put this on the pile. I might end up picking it up, but uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll find something else that I want more. Uh, and then we got Spartan Total Warrior, another one that I don't have. Uh, it's $11, which I I'm just not like super stoked about this one. So we're gonna leave it behind, even though that looks kind of interesting and I would like to have it. Moving on down to the Xbox 360, uh, immediately this copy of Alone in the Dark caught my eye until I very quickly realized that it was some weird printed artwork. Um, it, it was a pretty good price, but like with this printed artwork, I just couldn't really justify it. And then also DMC, Devil May Cry. We're gonna throw this one on the pile. This is just like a great series. Uh, I love Devil May Cry. And this is just one of them that I don't have. So we might end up picking that up. Ah, oh, someone did this copy of Chronicles of Riddick dirty, man. I love that game, but uh, that will not be one that I'm taking home with me. No, sir. Okay, how about this, though? Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Uh, I've been playing some fighting games on my Xbox 360 lately. I got this cool fight stick that I've been using. So I've been looking to bulk up my fighting game collection on the 360, and this would definitely be a good one to take home with me. Uh, pretty decent looking copy, complete in the box. And it was 12 bucks, which is a pretty decent price, too. So we're going to throw that one in the pile to take home as well. Yeah, we're not going to take home everything that I'm throwing on the pile. I, I usually work on a budget when I go out game hunting, but uh, I'm just putting all the stuff that I'm interested in on a pile, and we may or may not end up taking it home. But uh, here's another one, Virtua Fighter 5 Online. Uh, again, another cool fighting game for the 360. Another one that we're going to throw on the old pile. Yeah, Virtua Fighter is a really cool series. I have Virtua Fighter 4 on the PS2, and that game is super fun. So yeah, another cool one that we might take home with us. Let's check out the accessories wall. There must be some cool stuff over here in the way of accessories. Uh, I see some controllers, a few cables. I was definitely interested in this PS3 light gun that works with a PS Move controller. And I think $15 is actually like really solid. Uh, I was very tempted by this, but I'm moving soon and I just don't need to bring more like big bulky stuff like that into my life. Uh, and I definitely don't need this either, the sealed Eye of Judgment package thing. 
I don't even know what this is, but it comes with a PlayStation camera and a bunch of other stuff. Seems pretty cool. Uh, these are a scam, right? It, just just clean your laser with a microfiber cloth and some isopropyl alcohol. You don't need to buy a product to do that. I was really impressed with the selection of PS2 games in this store. They had a lot of PS2 games and just a lot of interesting ones that I hadn't really seen in stores before. Like this game, Dark Angel. I've, I've never seen this anywhere, never heard of it. It was only $8 and I almost bought it, but uh, I, I don't know. I was more interested in some of the other stuff that I had, so I left that behind, even though it looks pretty cool. I, I might grab that if I ever come back to this store. This, though, I think I actually will be grabbing. Wait, nope, that's, that's not what I thought it was. That's the Bible game. Uh, I'm not going to buy the Bible game. I just thought it was funny, so I picked it up. Uh, what we're going to get is Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance for the PlayStation 2. Uh, $13 is actually really decent for this, uh, even though it's the greatest hits copy. It was complete with the manual and the disc was in great shape, so I have no problem paying $13 for this. I really like these kind of hack and slash games for the PS2 and Xbox, so happy to bring that one home with me. And then here's another weird one that I've never seen anywhere. This game Primal, I have no idea what that is. I miss the times when there were just like weird budget games like this coming out that probably didn't sell that many copies, but studios were just making stuff like this. And I feel like games have just become a lot more homogenized. Like I still think there's tons of great games coming out, but I just wish we still lived in a time when there were just these weird budget games coming out all over the place and not every game was this huge... A uh, big swing that cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make. Speaking of big swings, check out this sexy bikini lady. I, I don't know. I don't know what that transition was supposed to mean, but uh, this looks like a useful product, I guess. Hey, moving over to the glass case. What do we got in the glass case today? We got any cool Xbox stuff? Yes, we do. We have uh, Halo. Ha uh, Halo Origins bundle sealed for $100. That's actually really cool. Um, I, I would definitely like to own that someday, but I, d I definitely don't need it sealed like because I'm just going to open it up and play it. So why would I pay the premium on a sealed version? There'd be no reason to do that. Uh, so I'm not going to buy this today, even though that's really cool. Got a couple more pricier titles over here that I don't really see that often. Crimson Skies up there for some reason. And, uh, uh, but what I'm really interested in was down here. We got uh, uh, Dead or Alive. Whoa, okay, stop. Go to commercial. Sega Genesis is a console that I don't collect for, but they have a bunch of Sega Genesis games here, which is cool. I, I like the way the cases look for the Sega Genesis. I think those are some good looking cases. And then down below, we got the PS4, which uh, that's a console that I've started collecting more for recently, um, but they had exactly zero games here that I was interested in buying. Um, a lot of stuff that I already have, I'm just not interested in playing at all. So I didn't buy any PS4 games today, but uh, that's a console that I've just had my eye on a lot recently. Uh, and here's a place where I like to put my grubby hands. Just a, a box full of loose GBA carts. Uh, I, I love the Game Boy Advance. I like buying cheap Game Boy Advance games. Uh, I was looking through these and just didn't really see anything that great, unfortunately. I, I thought this game was interesting, Super Bubble Pop. I've never heard of that one. There was a, a freestyle a dirt bike game that looked kind of interesting. I don't know. It was mostly just a bunch of crap. And I, I have nothing against buying crappy GBA games. I, I've, I've done that in other videos, actually. Um, but just these crappy ones weren't really catching my eye. Ah, who needs a starter kit for their Wii? I know that I don't, but I'm also intrigued by sealed third-party accessories for some reason. I don't know. Just whenever I see stuff like this, I, I just kind of look at it and think, huh, that's cool. And then I don't buy it, but you know. And here's the GameCube section, and boy, I I love the GameCube, but I'm glad that I don't collect for it because I feel like every time I go into a game store, this is what the GameCube section looks like, and all the games are ninety dollars, so I just don't really get it, you know. And here's some of the higher end Game Boy Advance stuff. Definitely some cool games in here. Um, nothing that I'm looking to spend my money on today, but Final Fantasy Tactics. Ugh, I love that game, and I don't have it. Someday I will buy it, but I I'm just not looking to spend a ton of money today, so. Uh, you know, we're just chilling, looking for cheaper stuff. That's how we do it. And nothing in this glass case is going to get me to buy it. And last but not least, we're going to check out this PS1 section. There are a couple cool things in here that I was tempted by. Um, like uh, this game, Gobble. Is that what it's called? Gobble? Uh, yeah, this, this looks fun. I, I don't know what it is. But uh, it was just like a cheaper PS1 game that I thought looked kind of fun. And they also had Qbert for pretty cheap. Uh, Qbert's a great game. I love Qbert. I, I would like to have it on PS1, but I think we're going to leave that behind this time. Maybe next time we'll grab it. And also, Austin Powers Pinball. Okay, I don't know why, why I looked at that. All right, we've grabbed a few things to take home. I'm pretty much done looking through the store. But before I leave, I just wanted to fix something. I saw a bunch of games on the floor, and then I noticed that Splinter Cell Chaos Theory was down on the floor. It, it doesn't belong on the floor. It belongs up on a shelf, because that's, that's one of the best games.
All right, y'all, we're back in the Collector John Corolla. Uh, that store was awesome. I, I really liked it a lot. Um, for how small it was, they had a very, very decent selection of titles, especially for the PS2. I was, like, really impressed with their PS2 selection. There's a lot of cool stuff there. And uh, the owner, I think his name was Charlie. He was super nice. So if you live in the southeastern Wisconsin area, definitely check out Respawn Retro Gaming. Um, I had a really good experience there, so check it out for sure. But, yeah, we got a few things that I think are really cool, so let's see what we got. First of all, we got Mad Dash Racing. I've always wanted to play this. I just really like the cover. I think the animals look super cool and funny. And it has music by Moby, Fatboy Slim, and the Crystal Method. And that's my vibe, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, it's a nice complete copy. Um, disc looks really good. And the case is in super good shape. And this was a $12 game, so stoked about that one. Then we got Tekken Tag Tournament 2 for the Xbox 360. Uh, this game was $12, which I think is pretty decent for Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Um, and it is a nice complete copy as well. Um, good looking disc. And yeah, I've really been looking for stuff to play on my Xbox 360 fight stick. So this will be a good good game for that, for sure. Then we got Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. Uh, I've been looking for a copy of this forever. Um, it just seems like it's always a little overpriced or just doesn't have the manual or not great condition. Um, but this one is in good condition and it has the manual and it was only $13, which that seems pretty good. It is a greatest hits copy, but I can live with that. That's fine. And then last, but certainly not least, uh, we got Dead or Alive Extreme 2. <laughs> uh, this was the most expensive game that I bought today at $25. And uh, I have Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball in the Xbox and it's super fun. So I've been looking to pick this one up for a while. It is $25, which I don't think that's, you know, an amazing deal or anything. Um, but it came with the manual and it's in super good shape. So I had no problem paying 25 for this and I'm uh, super excited to check it out. So yeah, that's everything that I bought today and I spent $65. So I'd say these titles are more on the heavy hitter side compared to what I usually buy. Like I'm usually going for really, really cheap stuff. And all of these games are over $10, which to me as an Xbox and Xbox 360 collector, when I'm buying games that are over $10, those are like considered heavy hitters for those consoles. But yeah, great store. I had a great time in there. I, I highly recommend checking it out. And uh, I think what we're going to do now is actually hit up a Goodwill really quick. Um, there's a Goodwill in West Bend that I've never been to. So I think we're just going to pop in there, see what it's all about. Maybe buy something, maybe not. But uh, yeah, let's head over there and see what they have. Pulling up to the Goodwill. Let's see if we can find some video games. Probably not. I never find video games at Goodwill anymore. That that age is, is past. We are now in the dark age of uh, games at Goodwill. Uh, but we're gonna look around anyway, cause you know, maybe we'll get lucky. You never know what could happen with Goodwill. Yeah, let's go. Well, as it usually goes with Goodwills these days, uh, I'm not finding a lot of video games here. I, I did find a couple things eventually, but right off the bat, I just wasn't really seeing a lot. But I did find this cool tracks compilation. There's some uh, some cool tracks on here, such as uh, I'll Never Break Your Heart by Backstreet Boys and other great songs. But yeah, mostly looking through the CDs, just trying to find PS1 games. Uh, I do tend to have luck with that somewhat frequently, just finding PS1 games at Goodwill in the CD section. Uh, this isn't a PS1 game, but it is a old PC game, Tonka Search and Rescue. That's kind of cool. I, I don't collect this kind of thing, but still fun to see stuff like that. I don't know. Oh, and what's this I see? Putter Golf for the PlayStation 1? Very interesting. Uh, no manual? No thank you. Oh, this has the manual, though. We got Action Bass for the PlayStation 1. Uh, I, I guess I'll buy it. I don't know. It's, uh, it's a fishing game. Uh... It's in decent condition. It's a PlayStation One game. I don't know. Sure, it's it's three dollars. I guess I'll I guess I'll buy that. Oh, we're hitting the jackpot today. Another PS One game. Uh, that doesn't have the manual either. Uh, oh wait. Oh, here we go. This one does. Another fishing game. Am I am I gonna buy all these fishing games? What am I What am I doing? I I don't know. Is that another fishing game? Are we gonna buy three fishing games for the PlayStation One today? Is that Is that really what I'm gonna spend my money on? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. I bought all three of them, so I, I'm not ashamed. I, I feel good about it. Ah, I see an Xbox logo over here. What do we got? We got a oh, Dance Dance Revolution Ultra Mix 3. Okay, I'm not interested in that. Uh, yeah, bunch of crappy games. Nothing really that interesting at all, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass on those today. And I got really excited for a second when I went over to the electronics because I saw Tomb Raider 3, and I thought it was a PS1 game, but it's not. It's a PC game. Uh, however, this is pretty cool because it comes with this demo disc, uh, and I remember having this exact demo disc, which I think came with our PC copy of Tomb Raider 2, uh, but yeah, my brother and I used to have that, and we played all those games on that disc, so that was pretty sweet. Uh, here's a Matco Tools clock. 
I thought it was funny, but I, I'm not going to use this. I have enough clocks around my apartment that I that I don't need. I saw this other racing themed clock, which was actually nicer, a lot nicer than the first one. But uh, yeah, what am I gonna what am I gonna do with these these uh, motorsport clocks? I, I don't know. And then I saw this portable DVD player, which I'm actually fairly intrigued by these. I mean, they come from a weird place in time where it was, you know, it was post digital, but before smartphones made all this stuff just completely useless. So yeah, I don't know. I might get one of these someday. I don't know what I'd actually use it for, but I just think they're kind of an interesting thing. And then looking through the board games and stuff, I saw a couple things that were kind of interesting. Um, there was this puzzle, uh, Wizards Dragon Crystal Puzzle. I really like these kind of puzzles, like these goofy fantasy themed ones. I think they're really cool. Um, unfortunately, this one was already open and I don't buy open puzzles from Goodwill because you just never know. It's probably going to be missing quite a few pieces. And then there was this uh, vintage Kinect box set, this huge roller coaster, four feet tall. That's pretty big, man. That's That's very big. But again, this was open. Um, it, if it was sealed, I would definitely probably pick this up just because it's, it's awesome. But yeah, definitely going to be missing some pieces and just probably not in the best condition if it's been used. So I don't know. It's it's a little overwhelming for me. And I just, I, I'm not going to buy something like this. And that's pretty much it for Goodwill. Didn't find anything else interesting. I looked at this Othello box because I liked how it looked. Uh, but yeah, we're going to head on back to the Corolla. Found another thing on my way out. Uh, mystical call of the loon yeah it's pretty cool is it just loon calls i don't know all right man well that was more video games than i found at a goodwill in months so i'll take it man you just you gotta take what you can get sometimes you know what i mean and i got the loon calls let's pop let's uh let's see what these loon calls are all about nice those are some nice loon calls is there any music on them okay here we go here's some we got some <laughs> all right this song is 10 minutes long all right uh, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to quick trip all right we're gonna head home uh, it's been a great day of video game collecting here in West Bend Wisconsin couldn't have asked for a more beautiful day just to be hanging out and uh, collecting some video games. And uh, it's all thanks to you guys. <laughs> Y'all have been with me uh, through the, the hard times, through the easy times, through all the times. You've just, you've been there for me and I appreciate you so much. Back to the studio. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, we're back here in the Collector John studio. We're playing some Dead or Alive Extreme 2. Let's check it out. Uh, I have the first Dead or Alive Extreme game, uh, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball on the original Xbox. I think that game's pretty fun. I mean, it's it's very uh, stupid. Um, and this game seems pretty stupid as well, but stupid in a way that I think is kind of funny and entertaining. I mean, they just don't really make uh, games like this anymore where well, they do, but like from a AAA developer, seeing a game where its its sole purpose is just like, uh, let's put something out for the pervy teenagers. We need a we need a game for those kids, uh, and that's kind of the entire uh, purpose of the game is just that. That kind of thing doesn't really exist anymore, so it's just kind of funny to go back to it and just see, you know, what is this? What are these games like? Like, what is a uh, what is Dead or Alive Extreme Two? What is the gameplay? Uh, so we're gonna check it out. I played a little bit yesterday, and uh, we're gonna dive in a little more and uh, see how the game is. You know, I'm I'm very concerned with the the gameplay of Dead or Alive Extreme 2. So we're gonna go. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna we're gonna leave the pool. We're not doing any more relaxing at the pool. We're gonna do some volleyball, maybe uh, take the jet skis out for a spin. Dude, okay, I keep accidentally. It's an accident, I swear. I'm not I'm not trying to go to the pool. So yeah, from what I've played of this, it seems like um, it's, it's a series of mini games, I guess. Like even the volleyball, I consider it kind of a mini game because it's, it's just very shallow, like control wise. And I, I don't know, everything about it just isn't that, uh, 
that deep or... Okay, I, I'm really bad at it also, that's, that's the other thing. Um, so it's like a series of mini-games and it's kind of wrapped up in this like life simulator thing, I guess. Um, and then you're just like using your money to buy stuff for your ladies. Like swimsuits and stuff. And uh, that's kind of the whole game. And yeah, like, the volleyball, there's like two buttons to press, and I, there must be like a little more to it, um, just with like maybe the timing of button presses or like stuff you can do with the joystick, because I keep losing, I'm really bad at it, and I'm not really sure why, um, but that's okay, I don't really, I don't really care if I win or lose. Um, but yeah, serving, I, I feel like I hit the net a lot when I serve, so... We're just going to try this and see what happens. Yeah, so that seems to be happening every time, and I, <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, okay, that was I was just zoning out there. It's a pretty nice-looking game. I mean, it's an early Xbox 360 game. I think these uh, character models look pretty good. You know, good polygon count. <laughs> okay, I'm doing so bad. I can't, I can't talk about this and play it at the same time. Bro. That was the worst game I've played yet. I, I had one yesterday where it was 7-7 seven to seven at the end. That's okay. I'm just, you know, just trying to get my thoughts on the game. I'm not trying to be good, because I, I don't care. Um, so we can play some more beach volleyball, or we can go to the marina and do a marine race. Let's do that. Let's do a jet ski race. Um, yeah, this game is filled with licensed music, which is why I have the sound off. And it's a pretty good soundtrack. It's very beachy. There's, you know, it's a pretty good variety of different stuff. There's like some reggae and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, I, I hate the jet skiing in this game. I, I think it's terrible. Um, I think the, the turning is like super sensitive. And it's really easy to just totally lose control of the jet ski. And on top of that, I think the the camera angle is just like it's it's way too low. It's like too hard to see what's in front of you because the you know the girls in the way. And you know, obviously they were probably doing that on purpose because people just want to look at the people just want to look at the lady. But uh, I want to be able to see where I'm going, and the way that the camera is set up makes that uh, quite difficult. So. Definitely don't like the jet skiing, and I'm pretty sure that's a new thing that they added for this game. Um, that was like, I think that was one of the big selling points for it, which is why they have a jet ski on the cover here. Um, but I just think it's really bad. Like, it's not it's not well implemented. It's it's very shallow, and so far all the races that I've done have been two laps, so they're just like super quick. Yeah, I don't know. I. I think the volleyball is a little more fun, even though I'm terrible at it. Yeah, so here's the radio station where you can pick your music and stuff. And yeah, as you can see, it's all um, it's all licensed stuff. There's some Hillary Duff. Uh, that's great. The Baja Men, appropriate. Um, Real Big Fish, appropriate. And yeah, it looks like there's some stuff that you unlock also, which is kind of cool. Let's do, uh, we'll try another volleyball. I'm gonna focus a little more this time. We'll see if I can, if I can do any better. Uh, I might brush up on the manual really quick. I might check out the controls in there just to see if they have any tips for being better at volleyball. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that quick. Um, this is like a super beefy manual. Use the D-pad to decide in your serving position. Press A to toss the ball, then A again when it comes down to serve. I mean, that's pretty much what I've been doing. Okay, so I should be holding left and pressing A when I serve. That's the underhand serve, which is apparently the easiest one. Okay, and then you can hit A to block at the net. All right, let's try this again. Let's see what happens here. Oh, God. <laughs> just right off the bat, just, just doing great. All right, setting up the spike. All right, we got a point. Okay. Okay, a nice soft underhand serve, and then they're just gonna kill us. Oh my god, okay. You hit the net, what were you doing? Give him a spike. Oh no. God. You can also use the right stick to move the AI character around, which is really freaking difficult. 
to be like focusing on moving two characters with both sticks. Hey, we got another point. That's good. You can move the camera around, which is, you know, I'm sure a lot of, a lot of youths were doing that, moving the camera around when this came out. Hey, all right, we're tied up, we're tied up. I'm doing better than last time, that's for sure. So. Oh, whoop, okay. I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just... Okay, I blocked it, I blocked it, that's good. Hit it! Okay, I'm blocking, I'm blocking some spikes. No! Hey! Alright, that was pretty good, that was good. I think I'm getting better. Oh, that was bad, that was pretty bad. Oh, come on. Come on now. Oh, what are you doing? Oh no. Oh, freaking dang it, man. Okay. Well, it's a match point already. That's not good. Okay. Oh, they still got it. They got it. Shoot. Blocking a lot of spikes here. Okay. Well, you know, at least I did better than last time, but, uh, yeah, so there's, like, kind of a day-night cycle, like, you go through the days doing different activities, and then night comes, and then you go back to your room and get a present from Zach, usually. I received a gift from Zach. What is, a? Uh... and I don't know, I don't know how to open the gifts. That's, like, that's a basic thing that I should probably just know how to do, um... But yeah, I, I haven't figured it out yet. And then you go to bed, and that's uh, <laughs> that's Dead or Alive Extreme 2, pretty much. It's it's definitely like a pretty shallow game, but again, I think the just the silliness of it, like it's so over the top in what it is that it's just like I don't know. It's it's basically a novelty at this point. Was it worth twenty five dollars? Um, I don't know, man. What you know? It, with video game collecting, it's so hard to you know, say if a game was worth it or not. But to me, I like the first game. I think these games are fun and goofy, and I, you know, it's just something that I'd like to have in my collection, so I guess to me it's worth $25. That's like definitely on the high end of what I'd want to pay for it. But yeah, it's it's just a fun, goofy game, and I'll probably play some more with my girlfriend, and that'll be fun too. But yeah, uh, I would like to play some more stuff. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time to uh, film this segment today, and I've been working on this video for a while, and I really just want to put it out. So we're going to call it at Dead or Alive Extreme 2, and uh, in my next video, I think we'll be playing some more video games for sure, if you guys are into that. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we'll be back soon with more game collecting content uh, from your boy, Collector John, and we will see you then. Peace out, yo.